Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. We've got some bad news involving uh, one of the OGs in the firearms industry, an American hero, Larry Vickers. It's not good. Um, the news, a press presser just came out from the federal government, the DOJ. And I want to tell you all about it. First, I want to thank the sponsor of the video, CMMG. Uh, they have brought me here with other creators to sample a new release. You'll see more about that in my socials, but the Mark 47 Descent is coming and I want it and you should get one. It's, whew, but uh, code GNG10, save you a lot of money there. Thank you. All right, like I said, some bad news. Let's jump right into it. Here it is on the screen. This is the press release for the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, in the District of Maryland. It says a federal grand jury has returned an indictment charging five defendants with a conspiracy to illegally acquire machine guns and other regulated firearms. Charged in the indictment, which was unsealed yesterday, are the following people, and you can see their names, and uh, Larry Vickers is there as well. The indictment was announced by U.S. Attorney for the District of Maryland, Eric Barron, Special Agent in Charge, Tony Crosby of the ATF, Special Agent in Charge, so Bukinski of the FBI and special agent in charge Carter of the IRS, as well as the inspector general uh, Kafari of the Department of Homeland Security, the office of inspector general. According to the 26 count indictment, Hall and Sawyer were chiefs of police in Coates, North Carolina and Ray, North Dakota, respectively. Sullivan was the owner and operator of Trident LLC located in Gambrills, Maryland, and was also an intelligence analyst with the Department of Homeland Security Investigations. Sullivan and Trident were federal firearms licensees and special operation taxpayers, also called SOTs, which allowed them in certain circumstances to possess, import, manufacture, and deal in fully automatic firearms, AKA machine guns, and other regulated firearms. Tafoya and Vickers owned and operated firearm-related businesses in New Mexico and North Carolina and were also FFLs and SOTs. The indictment alleges that beginning in at least June of 2018 through at least March of 2021, the defendants conspired to acquire machine guns and or other restricted firearms such as short-barreled rifles by falsely representing that the firearms would be used for demonstration to law enforcement agencies, including the Coates Police Department and the Ray Police Department. The indictment further alleges that Hall, Sawyer, and other conspirators signed law letters with no expectation that the weapons would ever be demonstrated to their respective law enforcement agencies. The defendants allegedly intended to impermissibly import into the United States and resell the machine guns and other firearms for profit or to keep for their own use and enjoyment. And enjoyment. Sullivan allegedly submitted the false law letters to the ATF seeking to import the machine guns and other restricted weapons. Once the firearms were received, Sullivan allegedly kept some of the machine guns and other restricted weapons and transferred some of the weapons to Vickers, to FOIA, and other conspirators. In addition to the indictment, Larry Vickers pleaded guilty yesterday to participating in the conspiracy to import and obtain machine guns and other restricted firearms and admitted that he received some of the imported machine guns and other weapons. As detailed in his plea agreement, Vickers kept some of the machine guns and other restricted weapons in his personal collection and transferred other machine guns and restricted weapons to other FFLs and third parties. Vickers also pleaded guilty to a conspiracy to violate U.S. sanctions against a foreign firearms manufacturer between July 2014 and March of 2021 in the Southern District of Florida. Vickers faces a maximum sentence of five years in federal prison for conspiracy to violate federal law regulating firearms and a maximum of 20 years in federal prison for conspiracy to violate the International Emergency e Economic Powers Act. The U.S. District Court Judge Julie Rubin has not yet scheduled sentencing for Vickers. He's looking at 25 years. If convicted, Sullivan, Tafoya, Hall, and Sawyer face a maximum sentence of five years in federal prison for conspiracy to violate federal law regulating firearms and for each count of false statements related to submission of a law letter. 
Sullivan and Tafoya face a maximum of five years in prison for each count of unlawful importation of a firearm and for each count of making a false statement in records maintained by FFLs. Sullivan also faces a maximum of 10 years in federal prison for unlawful possession of unregistered machine guns and 10 years in federal prison for using criminal proceeds to conduct financial transactions. Actual sentences for federal crimes are typically less than the maximum penalties. A federal district court judge will determine any sentence after taking into account the U.S. sentencing guidelines and other statutory factors. Sullivan and Tafoya have already had an initial appearance in U.S. District Court in Baltimore and were released pending trial. Hall and Sawyer are expected to have an initial appearance at a later date. An indictment is not a finding of guilt. An individual charged by indictment is presumed innocent unless and until proven guilty at some later criminal proceeding. Guys, I'm going to tell you, this is not good. Uh, he was indicted and he pled guilty. And we know that the ATF and the FBI are looking to make examples of people in the firearms community. Look what they did with CRS firearms. Whether you like how he operated or not, uh, they made an example of him. And they're going to do the same to these men as well. Uh, for those who aren't up to, I'm not an FFL, I'm not an SOT, uh, but back when this originally uh, happened, when they took Larry's guns, it was because his SOT expired, and that's when this investigation kind of kicked off. Uh, the law letters, what they're talking about is when you buy a machine gun, you import a machine gun, you have to have a law letter, meaning it's being brought in and it's imported and purchased so that the, this police department can actually uh, undergo a demonstration of this gun to decide if they want to purchase some. Um, and it sounds like uh, they were doing that and, uh, with no expectation of actually doing any of the uh, demos and just buy, you know, bringing them in for themselves and selling some of them. Not good, guys. Not good. And, you know, Larry is, uh, has just gotten through a bout of cancer. Uh, so, Larry, if, you have, if this gets to you, man, I hope that you're doing okay and then... I hope your health is better, but uh, guys, uh, just keep Larry in your prayers because uh, the unconstitutional ATF is going to do what they do. Uh, but I just wanted to get to this news because it's news in our community and unfortunately it's bad. It's, it's really bad. But uh, thank you all for uh, watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe because that's what it's all about. Our forefathers died for it and the government wants to take that away. Things that make you go... Hmm. See you in the next one.